Delacroix. Delacroix, it's me, Cortez. We're locked in here. Hey, who are you? Oh, shit. We've just received a hail from a crew member on board the Van Braun. They've managed to regain control of the ship. We're going to turn around and head back. I'm a little concerned about Rebecca. She's been acting strangely since we've come on board. She's asleep now. Maybe when we get back to the Von Braun, we can... Move it, Tommy! The escape pod is this way! That damn worm nearly bit my leg off! Darling, I'll bite you if you don't get your button gear! Oh, no. Let's go, Tommy! Come on! Come on! Soldier, this is Captain William Diego. There isn't much time, so you must listen. I have the unique advantage of seeing this whole situation from every imaginable perspective. Until recently, I was a pawn of those vile and disgusting creatures, those corruptors of mind and body. I've managed to cleanse myself of their putrescence, but I've been severely compromised in the process. I'm in the sick bay on the foredeck of the Rickenbacker. I would come to you if I could, but that's an impossibility. You'll understand when we meet. Now get to it. And soldier, stay alive. Before, I couldn't get rid of those jarheads from the Rickenbacker. And now I can't find one for love or money. That creepy OSA guy followed me around for two months until he got the hint. Now I tried to contact him to see if he knew what was going on, but all of a sudden, he won't return my mail. Delacroix was right. This ship was not ready for prime time. Okay. The automatic safety seals have shut due to the radiation leak in the tubes. I'm going to head down to engineering control. I think I can use the fluidics monitoring computer to purge the tubes. Balone's dead. I was just talking to him and this cyborg came up behind him and... Okay, Connie, get a grip. Get a grip. I've recoded the door lock in engineering control to 15061. I think I'll be safe in here. Yeah, I'll be safe in here. They hit us six hours ago. Malone, the OSA spook, tried to take one of those things out with a pyrokinesis attack, but didn't even break stride. Then it unloaded both barrels into his stomach. Valzone said there's a weapons cache in one of the engine nacelles. Maybe I can find him and the others there. I don't know where we'd be without Delacroix. This whole ship is falling apart. She's the only one who knows what from what. I saw her arguing with that creep Anatoly Koreskin or whatever his name is, and she was giving it to him, but good. But that freak job stares her straight in the eye and starts babbling about how she doesn't know the pleasure of the joyful unity or some such. Mamma mia, the clowns are running the circus. Stay where you are, Beck. I mean it. This isn't something you can fight. This isn't something you can run from. If you love me, you won't come looking for me. Just hang tight. I won't let you down. God, get me out of here. I've recorded a lock to this room. Maybe that will hold them. I'm heading to cargo, to cargo bay two. Come find me there. I'm not sure what's creeping me out worse. The hybrids with their pipes and shotguns, the berserk turrets are our supposed allies. I don't trust those UNM bastards. I've got to find Sanger. She knows the access code to Fluidix Control. I'm gonna make my way over to Cargo Bay 2 to find her. Anatoly, you must open up the planet to the scientific staff of this vessel. If there is something down there, it's bigger than Triop. It's bigger than the UNN, and it's bigger than you. And why have you and Diego shut off Deck 3? What's going on? I'm not sure what secrets you and your new buddy, Captain Diego, have got going up on Deck 3, but I intend to find out. If you continue to refuse to meet with me and my staff, you will leave me no choice but to register a complaint with corporate. If you want to take me seriously, perhaps Sergeant Bronson and her security staff will. Taking precautions, I proceeded with further experiments. Since we've reached Tau Ceti, creatures have gotten smarter and somehow gained limited psi abilities. I probed another subject with a Beta-5 cycle and sensed many things, but mostly an incredible empathy. The chimps have become acutely aware of their own history, of the vivisections and experiments that have been performed on them while on board the Von Braun. They have anger, and they are ready to express it. 
Clearly, they are both a fascinating scientific resource and an incredible security risk. My recommendation? Either freeze them in cryo storage for the remainder of the mission or liquidate them immediately. Who knows what other abilities they'll acquire. My duty is to the UNN and to this ship. But can I resist the call of the many? My father's weakness brought Shodan into existence. My weakness has invited these things aboard the Von Braun. Can I undo the wrong I have done? In some ways, the many is not unlike the UNN. There is a joy in working towards a collective goal, in being able to put aside the things that draw us apart and make us separate. Why do we fear the loss of our individuality so much? Man can dream, but the many can accomplish. A laboratory worker from MedSci called me down to the vivisection room yesterday. He felt the lab chimps were exhibiting uncommon intelligence. I sat with one for four hours and tried to probe it with the Psyamp on a Beta-4 cycle. It failed to respond. I, of course, assumed it was because it was incapable of reacting to the sophisticated Beta-4 cycle. But then, I realized it was blocking the probe intentionally. As soon as I raised the Psyamp to attack it, the creature lashed out with its arms and projected a cryokinetic field towards me, paralyzing my arm. I immediately side dampened the monkey and then stunned it with an electric prod. Due to the tenuous situation as of late, I've ordered security defense turrets placed at key locations. Yesterday one went off accidentally and critically injured Crewman Wells. However, somebody must have tampered with the Xerxes security subsystems, because now my technicians are unable to take them offline. Until we get to the bottom of this, I've ordered all security turrets recalled to storage. But now I can't get in touch with the team I sent out to do the recall. Well, we can't get the malfunctioning turrets offline, and now Xerxes isn't even talking to us. Pollard thought of a workaround. By running bypass into central control, we can hack into the turrets locally and take control of them. However, that means walking right up to the little sons of bitches and hoping they don't go off. One thing is sure, I'm going to figure out what the hell happened here. Paranoia has struck. Somebody has changed the access codes to the security station in the officer's quarters, and now we can't get the key to shuttle control. I think Myers is the likely suspect. All that guy thinks about is conspiracy theories and naked girls. I rewired the security station to 83273. I don't trust any of those bastards. Palito indicated that the AI who now needed to be shot was actually going to... They've got me now, and Shodan has abandoned me. I'm not surprised. I've discovered her plans for the faster-than-light drive. Who will is only meant by her imagination. If she gains access to the... Getting the escape pod working again wasn't as easy as we thought. Beck had to go back down to engineering. Thank God somebody managed to get the elevators turned on again. I found the bridge key and performed an override on the access protocols. And now, I think we're ready to go. The data gathering process is going well. Before I'm taken by the many, I will hopefully transmit a fair bit of information to whoever will listen. The large floating creatures are not only capable of attacking with powerful psi projections, but are psi projections themselves. Destroying them only temporarily disables them. Their real source of power comes from a small control organism, which is usually located somewhere nearby. Although this control organism is quite powerful through its projections, it's eminently vulnerable once rooted out. A worm crawled on my arm and rested on my neck. When he whispered into my ear, I felt a tingle. He told me how to make a weapon that would help us against our enemies. And here's the thing. It's made of worms. It even fires worms. But it stings like you wouldn't believe. We arrived planetside via the shuttle on June 15th at 0800 hours. Kerenchkin was the first one out the door, never even bothering to do a level B hazard suit exam. Not wanting to let that little triop suit get a head start, Diego went right after him. I thought it was crazy, sending the senior officers of the Rickenbacker down to the surface of an uncharted body. 
But both those idiots were gonna get all the glory for the UNN and try out they could. Damn. Time for inspection. More later. The eggs were lying in a semicircle in the middle of what looked like a crash crater. There were hundreds of those things. Hundreds. And as we got closer, you could hear them. Not the eggs. The things inside them. It was, it was like music. I was scared out of my mind. But that music... All I wanted to do was see those things up close. Find out their secrets. After a couple of hours, it was... It was like being on a bender. Long periods that you couldn't remember. One minute we were in that crater, and the next minute we were loading up the shuttle with the eggs. I remember hearing that idiot Karenchkin calling the Von Braun and ordering them to clear off the entire hydroponics deck. Diego seemed to think this was strange and said, Are you crazy, Anatoly? And Karenchkin smiled and said back to him, Oh, Captain, we are not Anatoly. For some reason, they couldn't get a hold of my mind the way they could the rest. So when I found the remains of the data wafer near the crater back on Tau Ceti, I didn't say a word. I just slipped it into my belt and thought, Dr. Polito will know what to do with this. The genie of Citadel Station is out of the bottle, and I am the cause. I can't bear to be Pandora, and I'm not brave enough to wait around and see the death and misery I have caused. This is my last transmission, my friend. Be careful. I think Shodan has plans for you. Simpson, Malone, Shandera, and Perez are dead. At least those are the ones we know for sure. Those bastards sabotaged the Mison acceleration coil. They blew out the entire driver core, six subdecks. From what I can tell, somebody tapped the frequency resonator to refract human-sized movements. The overload of all those people moving around must have blown the resonator. We set up a magnetic shield, and the ship still functional. Barely. I've quarantined the entrance to Pod 2. The secondary coil is right there, and I don't know how thorough the son of a bitch who did this was. The worms are everywhere. Captain Diego is the one who let them in. Nobody knows who to trust anymore. Nobody's even sure who's human anymore. I've blown out the access ladders in the torpedo room to restrict access to Pod 2. Let's hope that holds them back. As long as we're alive and drawing a paycheck from the Navy, those bastards are not getting the rigged barter. Until I can reverse the Gravitronic generators, we're effectively cut off from Pod 2. Wozchek's email said the only way to do that is by resetting the power grid from the access station in engine nacelle B. Of course, he didn't volunteer to do it himself. What a goddamn mess. What did I think power was? What was my concept of joy? How empty life must have been. As I merge my body with the biomass, I begin to sense the borders of rapture. In order to reverse the gravitronic generators, I need to get into nacelle B. In order to get into the nacelle, I need my damn access card. But I left it on the opposite side of the hull breach. Wait a minute. If I can extend the auxiliary support struts, I could... If they've survived the blast, that is. Those worms were a cancer in my body, so I had the auto-dock cut it out. You think they're gonna let you blow up the Von Braun? The many will never allow it. But I've got something to help you. It's in my quarters. You'll find the access card on my body. Take the fight to them, soldier. And remember, you're the only one trust. One of the flying things dragged me and David here last night. I don't remember much about the trip. I guess I must have blocked it out, half conscious most of the time. I keep remembering the part from Pinocchio, you know, where the old man goes looking for the puppet inside the whale. Except I don't think anyone's coming in here to save me. There's some kind of horrible grinding noise coming from the next area. It sounds like... chewing. I think... I think I know what's going to happen here. This is some kind of digestive tract of a very, very large animal. I go back and forth between being fascinated and terrified. The creature's a remarkable discovery. I wish I could only live long enough to learn more. 
Five minutes ago, one of those large, burly creatures dragged Claudette towards the sound of the grinding. Apparently, the animal uses smaller creatures to help move food along its digestive tract. I tried to help Claudette, but it wasn't even a contest. And I'm ashamed to admit, I judged that seeing what happened to her was a vital element of my studies here. I imagine I won't have the opportunity to record any observations when it comes my turn. Now I'm convinced that this many, as it calls itself, indeed has a centralized nervous system, which means it would have to have some kind of centralized control. To this end, I've gathered as many weapons as I could and stashed them in caches. One of the beasts discovered a cache and apparently mistook it for food. It simply brought it into the crunching room. I, I'm being taken away now. It's my turn. I'm being dragged into some kind of chamber. The ceiling is aligned with a, a number of panels, uh, bristling with what appear to be uh, stalactites or, or teeth. The creature's put me down now. He's leaving. I might have spared. What's going on? It's, it's dark in here. I, I can hear the moans of someone. I, Claudette! Is that you? Uh, I seem to have stepped into something soft. S slippery. The starting tits. The arterial passageways are blocked by some kind of sphincter. I follow the nerves that threaded out of the walls from the blockage. They lead to a pair of nerve clusters. When the passageway is open, the cluster seems to contract. Conversely, I wonder if I was able to destroy both clusters. It would open the blockage permanently. I'm anxious to see the rest of this beast. It's clear that this thing I'm trapped inside is intimately linked with all the organisms I observed on board the Von Braun. Strike that. This creature is the same organism. Perhaps the best way to describe it, or perhaps the only way I can comprehend it, is that the organism serves to perform the highest mental functions of the entire species. The smaller creatures exist only to enact its will. Now, strike that too. All the specimens act as a whole, like different organs in a single body, with this entity acting primarily as a brain. If one were to destroy this large specimen, I wonder, would it snuff out all the others? With only a few short years of evolution, they have been able to conquer this starship, mankind's mightiest creation. Where were we after 40 years of evolution? What swamp were we swimming around in, single-celled and mindless? What if Shodan's creations are superior to us? What will they become in a million years, in 10 million years? What's clear is that Shodan shouldn't be allowed to play God. She's far too good at it. While I don't understand the analid life cycle fully, it's clearly extremely diverse. The eggs produce either a male or a female spore. The male, the drones, are wasp-like creatures. The female are worm-like annelids that seek out a host to infect. Following infection, the host begins to transform into a human annelid hybrid. From that point, the life form can take numerous paths. I believe this path is determined by the many itself. The creatures have communicated their need to grow the biomass, so I imagine that biological material is their primary resource. Therefore, each path has costs and benefits. The proto-arachnid is extremely quick and potentially relatively cheap in biomass. The hulking, fleshy ones are powerful, but are clearly a larger investment. I've observed only one example of the floating organisms. The only comfort is that the more dangerous organisms are quite costly to produce, limiting their numbers. Besides the parasitic behavior evidenced in the life cycle of the human annelid hybrids, it's becoming clear to me that Shodan has bred the many to use humans for other purposes. First of all, the many clearly has the capability to convert human flesh to energy. It can eat us, but it can also directly use us in the creation of its egg pods. Corpses are fed into some kind of tubular structure, and eggs are birthed through a nearby tube. I've been unable to determine whether the organism is directly converting the corpses into egg structures or not but it's clear that there's some connection between the nutrient pool we provide and the eggs that are being produced. If you are receiving this, I am already dead. When I realized Shodan had betrayed me, I integrated these comments into her primary data loop. Shodan has exploited the warping capability of the Von Braun's faster-than-light device for her own purposes. 
the device works by altering space around the ship to fairly arbitrary specifications. Shodan has altered it to her specifications. The effect is rather small now, but spreads with alarming speed. Soon it will reach Earth. You are in her world now, her memories, and her rules. Watch your back. You are not alone here. Shodan has spawned her own versions of the Von Braun's horrors. Remember, they are virtual, they are not real. Do not assume anything about their strengths or weaknesses. You are near the seat of Shodan's power. You will probably not be able to defeat her, but there is no choice. Remember to focus on your strengths. She will be vulnerable to your weaponry and your psionic powers. I've been able to introduce some assistance in the form of virtual terminals that you can hack into. They should help you defeat the monster. You must understand the stakes here. If Shodan is left to continue, her reality will completely assimilate ours. Space will become cyberspace, and Shodan's whims will become reality. This message is coming from the audio log you just picked up. You can use your PDA at any time to play any audio log or email you've received. In the field, the PDA is also used for keeping track of your current mission objectives and obtaining help information. I got called up around 0430 to help unload the shuttle coming back from Tau City. Kerenskin was there alone. Jesus, what the hell happened to him? He lost most of his hair, and you could see these lumps on the side of his neck. And that smell. I told him he should go see Dr. Watts, but he told me to mind my own business. Well, la -dee da These missions should have been scrubbed before it left Earth. We've been unable to contain the reactant coolant leaks on Deck 1. I've put an order requiring hazard suits down there. I know you think this would cause a panic, but it's better than giving everybody radiation sickness, don't you think? Marie, I've got to restrict access to engineering until we can figure out what to do down there. It's just too hot. I don't know where all the hazard suits went, so I'm reduced to bringing down an armful of rad hypos. Those damn things always give me a headache. I've been unable to get in touch with Delacroix. This place is falling apart. Members of my team keep disappearing. The leaks in the venting shaft shorted out the primary access channel. And that means we'll all be on auxiliary power until we can get it back up. That means all the lifts are out. Marie, where the hell are you? We have picked up a transmission from the surface of Tau City 5. I've been in negotiation with Captain Diego of the Rickenbacker, and after some coercion, he's agreed to go planetside as a joint venture. Imagine, this historic mission might even become more historic. First contact. And who is there to get exclusive rights to all media, patents, and land grants? Try optimum. Miri, I told you this would be worth it. Hey Doc, a security bot showed up with orders for me to place this grunt into the recovery freezer. I'm no cyber doc, but I know a plant job when I see one. I suppose you know they outlawed our grade cyber goodies after that fiasco back on Citadel Station. But hey, I just work here, right? I can't raise anybody down in engineering. With the lifts out, I'll need to get down there through the emergency conduit in the Psi Annex. I think the access code is in Watts' lab. Since returning from the surface of Tau Ceti 5, the patient has experienced numerous novel phenomena, evidenced by inflammatory nodular growth and the presence of a large worm-like parasite. This morning, the parasite penetrated the subject's chest from the inside and attached one end of itself to the subject's forehead. If I remove it, it could kill the kid. If I leave it... <sighs> Final diagnosis beats the hell out of me. I'd love to refer this to Midorsky at CDC, but unfortunately he's 67 trillion miles away. Patient Watson died at 0240 of non-specific causes. Despite zero respiratory and brain function, the body is still displaying autonomous motor function, as does the parasite. At 0847, the patient even spoke to one of the nurses. Autopsy is set for 16.30, and then we'll see what makes this Lazarus tick. The time is 16.30. Autopsy subject A. Watson. Now we're going to make the first incision in... 
Hold him down. I'm yes. trying to stop this. I'm trying. Ah! You can't understand my joy, Marie, and I won't try to make you. I feel like a new man. I have a purpose. More important than the mission. Even more important than Trioptimum. I will protect them. No matter what. I will protect them. There. The young ones are all aboard. Captain Diego and I have sealed off Deck 3. He and I are now of one mind. Our bodies are changing too. Sometimes it hurts terribly. And sometimes it is marvelous. Something wonderful is happening to me. Dick, I know you won't get this until after we return, but I've had to express how incredible I feel. we finally done it, made contact, and Muldoon and I have been selected to be involved in the initial work. Anatoly's one condition is that I tell no one aboard the ship. The creatures are remarkable. They're so helpless, I feel somehow compelled to protect them. It's a miraculous discovery. The specimens are dying, and we're powerless to help. They're highly toxic. Muldoon wouldn't leave them, and now he's dead. But this morning I had... a revelation. I started work specifications for a radical series of cybernetic enhancements. If successful, I could make a body practically indestructible, yet the mind would remain human, nurturing. There's not a lot of time. I found these schematics on Dr. Miller's desk. They're plans for the kind of cyber modification that's been illegal for 40 years. It's not like him. I was going to talk to him about it, and then I noticed. The DNA sequence he spec for the prototype. It's mine. I've received an e-message from Anatoly. He's not well. The corporate protocols specify I can remove the senior executive officer if he's found unfit for duty. But what about his ally, Captain Diego? He's got 120 goons on the Rickenbacker to back him up. I wonder if that fragmentary AI you discovered on Tau 75 is connected to this. Marie, this is urgent. It seems the AI from Tau City has integrated itself into the ship's computer. I picked up this fragment today. Insolent. Insolent. Not only that, but after I found the fragment, I returned to my lab to find it ransacked. I must see you. You're the only one I trust now. I have a theory about this AI. I tried to find information about the various rumors regarding the events on Citadel Station. I think I'm on... Chosen Nurse Bloom is the new mother to our children. She is sweet and kind, healthy and a perfect match. She has a child of her own back on Earth. She knows what it is to care for the young. Ave Maria. If she only knew what the future held, she shared the joys of the many. What do you know? Bronson was right after all. I imagine I've got about an hour, but I'm tracking the the transformations in the hope that the data might be useful to someone else. There are tumors on my leg and back. I can feel that thing inside me chewing, growing fat. My theory is they need a living host to complete the transformation. Screw Diego, screw Karinskin, screw Tau Seti 5. If someone finds this, don't have any regrets about punching my clock. I was already gone. Mark, what's going on? I thought it was weird when you asked me to send up 16 of my female staffers, but what have you done with them? I'm short-handed up here. Also, if you heard from what, Sanger or Polito, it's like everyone's gone on vacation and didn't bother to tell me. Marie, I'm sorry I've been out of touch, but I've been working on that artifact Bayless brought back from Tau City 5. I've done a level 3 analysis on it. I think it's some kind of artificial intelligence. I've managed to pull an audio tag file out of its memory. I'll let you be the judge.
Marie. I think it's speaking English. All right, calm down already. The access code to the conduit is 12451. I've got an autopsy at 1630, but let's grab a beer on the recreation deck afterwards. Sound good? Medical tells me they've replicated a whole bunch of rad hypos. I'm gonna pick those up and distribute them to the engineering staff unless anyone gets a better idea. Watts also asked me to check on the replicator in the crew lounge. He says it's a hacker's paradise. Security system on. Goddamn Bronson and her stupid procedures. She's changed the code on the MedSci 2 sub-armory again. Now I've got to head back up to deck four to find out what it is. Somebody's gonna frag her but good someday. Anatoly, there's only so much corporate calisthenics I can go through before I start to feel a little queasy, so let's get down to brass tacks here. We don't like each other. We each have our own motivations for undertaking this mission, so let me give you a little warning. I cannot be circumvented. I cannot be tricked. I cannot be manipulated. And I cannot be bought. You come at me straight, and keep the fancy maneuvers for your next board meeting. Just because my father swam with the sharks doesn't mean that I do. Wow, you're incredible. Do you know that? I made this game where I tried not to make myself think about you. What a moron. I love you, Rebecca, and I've got the plan. I've been buttering up the captain to transfer me from the Rickenbacker to the Goodwill team on the Van Braun. Pretty soon, nothing will keep us apart. Great. I've got to change the access codes out of CryoA again. Like I've got nothing better to do. I think Grassy just likes to make work for me. I'll set the new code to 45100. That should be easy enough to remember. Why is it that no one listens to me? The security protocols on the Xerxes system are clearly immature. Some idiot hacked into the primary data loop last night and made Xerxes sing Elvis Presley songs for three hours. I finally had to pull the voice subsystem offline. What would happen if someone with a real agenda got into him? Whose idea was it to bring 150 chimpanzees on board anyway? The interest of science? What about the interest of hygiene? Does anybody have any idea how much crap 150 lab monkeys make in a day? The poor chimps. They come on board for the most historic mission of all time, and they end up being chopped into little pieces in the name of progress. Ever since we reached Tau Ceti, the lab monkeys have been acting strangely. Nurse Lesser picked one out of a cage to be brought in for vivisection, and the rest of them, I mean the entire group, stood up on their legs and howled. This wasn't just a random display. It was a protest. Angela, while it may appear that the lab monkeys are communicating with each other, I assure you it's quite impossible. You claim that one monkey signed the passcode for a supply closet to another, and the latter proceeded to open it. As I'm sure you know, there have literally been tens of thousands of studies of primate intelligence, and there is no evidence of behavior even remotely that sophisticated. So either you've single-handedly trumped the entire field of animal behaviorists, or you're badly in need of a vacation. It's down to just a few of us now. Right after Valdez died, I, I guess I went a little nuts and started tearing things apart. But what do you know, I, I found two more rad hypes. Hopefully that'll keep me going long enough to figure a way past that damn turret. Who is that? Delacroix? Sanger? Damn. Why don't I just make a bonfire and throw all my nanites on it? Last night with Nikki was amazing. Hollow woman, real woman, you gotta love technology. But I must have left all my nanites in her room, in the sensual sim center. What a maroon. What's wrong with people? Things go to hell and they think they can just walk over the rules. I'm not opposed to a little vice now and then, but outright theft. Hey! What are you doing over there? Get away from that replicator, you son of a- Suarez and his whore want to escape. I do not understand. They get offered a miracle, and they bite the hand. The many have shared this wisdom. They shall not leave the ship. Something is going on. Karenjkin has sealed himself off in deck three. He keeps calling for people to go down there one by one. 
Vogel, Boynton, Switerak, none of them will come back. If they call for me, I don't know what I'm going to do. And Bronson is starting to make a lot of noise. You're the senior flight officer. You have to act. I would, but knew what the hell was going on. They've cut off the central elevator. What's going on? Last night I had the strangest dream. I was in my room by myself. But all of a sudden, there was not just me there, but a hundred me's. A thousand me's. The strange thing was, it felt good. I felt like I was part of something. Like I belong. I hope I have the same dream tonight. I got an email from Korenska this morning saying he was coming up for an inspection. And when he arrived, it was something revolting. It was Anatoly, but it wasn't. At the same time, it seemed beautiful, and I felt like part of it. He sang to us, all of us, and we felt like one of many. The glorious transformation is over. And I am one of the many. I imprint my thoughts on this device as a record of history. We began this journey as pilgrims of commerce, and we now continue it as pilgrims of grace. I believed in money and trioptimum, and now I believe in the joy of the mass. Diego cannot be trusted, so I must claim the ship for the many. It shall be our vessel of salvation, spreading our message and our flesh. The Machine Mother has enlisted two avatars against us. They stab them, but they will fare against our unity. Does not the Machine Mother know her own creation is greater than she? She is cold and empty, and we are warm and full. She seeks only to destroy. We seek to embrace, to include. All flesh will join us or be wiped clean. I hope you're still alive, Miss Delacroix. You really could use some guidance up here. They've got those lady cyborgs of theirs loading up the shuttles with those eggs. I don't know what their plan is, but it looks like they're running scared. I hear rumors of someone else besides you fighting back. Should I even hope to get out of this? I'm just gonna hang back until I figure out what the hell to do. I don't know what those goddamn worms want with the shuttles, but I'd love to throw a monkey wrench their way. If I can reach the control chamber above the shuttle bay, I can turn off the shields the worms and their helpers have set up around the shuttles. Once they're down, I can blow holes in those trioptimum brand tin cans with my sidearm. Now if I can just get in there without getting caught. Oh god, just get me out of this. I am a soldier and a simple man. I cannot explain what has happened to me or this mission. I take complete responsibility. I brought danger to my ship, to my crew, to my honor. I cannot resist the changes that are happening to me. The call of the many is seductive. They got Karenchkin, but that bastard is weak. I am not weak. I can resist this cancer. And if I cannot, I will remove it forcibly. God save the UNN. found this weird kind of weapon, but he must have used it wrong. Made him sick. Real sick. I stashed the thing on the second floor of the crew annex, and jury rigged the door lock. Code of 11111. Easy to remember, huh? I also stashed a pile of nanites and some other goodies there. No sense in getting caught with your pants down. Except in this place. <laughs> I'm so close to Rebecca, it's killing me. I'm spending some time with crew members who said they saw her. They told me they helped me find her if I helped them set up this transmitter. They're set on saving the Earth. I just want Rebecca. Then I'll take care of the Earth. I've just killed some kind of, some kind of spider. I don't know, but it bit me. And now I'm sick. I'm down to my last med hypo. Come quick, Tommy. Come quick. The lights near the basketball court keep fritzing out. I think the humidity from the pool next door is a real problem. If it happens when I'm not there, try resetting the circuit from the breaker by the pool. You think someone needs to call a tech? Listen, there's one escape pod Xerxes didn't eject, but it's busted. I've managed to get it functional, but I don't know how long it can stay that way. Make it there, Tommy, with or without me. If I don't get there, I want you to 
Hot and go. You understand me? Take it and go. They're coming! Oh no! I got the ARC terminals wired up to display the fragmented dish alignment for the transmitter. I've also rigged up the tower to set off a security alert in case somebody else tries to tamper with it. I'm headed there right now to start the transmission. Hey, who's that? Juan? Marie? Tell your team they may not be able to play. We were down in the basketball court when the Dan power went out. Again. Irony is, we were ahead for the first time in weeks. Well, we won't be the lapdogs of the Von Braun anymore. I've been working on dealing with all the bodies that have been stacking up. With the med base full and the escape pods and ejection tubes mysteriously locked up all of a sudden, we've got to do something with them. I've chosen the maintenance tunnel underneath the garden as an internment site. Keypad code 34093. I'm telling everyone to be careful. I don't trust the dead. The analytes have cut us off from the transmitter. Shodan tells me that once we've got the transmitter back online and the ops computers reprogrammed, she'll be able to take control of the ship away from Xerxes. Who should I trust less? An imposter claiming to be that monster or the monster herself? Forget about land grants. Forget about media. Forget about patents. What we found on Tau City will change everything. I've instructed the Von Braun to change course and return to Earth. Captain Diego is in complete accord with this decision. I know that you are skeptical by nature, Miri, but I know once you embrace our discovery, you and the entire board will come over to our way of thinking. Bronson knows. Won't let her undo the work we've done. Wired up a surprise for her. Anybody approaching Sim Unit 3 will feel sorrow. So much sorrow. I feel you men aren't as dedicated to the mission as you need to be. You will do your duty. The traitors and ops have still been unable to get the Sim Unit back online. If the situation is not remedied by 0600, we shall recon in force and ensure its remedy. I've changed the weapon's lockup code to 13433. Fallen at 0500. Anything that gets in your way, human or not, kill without pause or remorse. You listen to me, you little bitch. Either you disband that little toy army of yours or some real military is gonna come down there and walk all over your reticops. You can't possibly understand what our mission is here and the glory of our purpose. If you do what we say, you might have a chance to see the glory of a many. Comply or die, sister. It's that simple. They've given me two gifts. Isn't that marvelous? Two little shards of crystal. It's very, very sharp, and when I strike it, it sings to me. They wanted to sing to Sergeant Bronson. I go there now to share my gift with her. They're very fragile, but very sharp. I'm trying to get up to find you, Tommy, but I can't. I'm stuck in ops. There's some kind of civil war going on here. The security forces came in and... Now, don't freak out, but I'm hurt. But not too bad. I managed to pull together a supply of med kits and a few other goodies. Some of it looks valuable, but I'm not sure what it is. Maybe some kind of military-grade implant. I left the stuff I didn't need in a corner of the data library, out of the way in case I need it later. I'm on my way. I promise you, I will not die. I will not die. You do the same, my love. Yours, Becca. I've authorized a change in the access code for the auxiliary weapons lockup in the crew quarters of Med Psy Deck to 98383. I won't have my own gear used against my men. There's no such thing as too cautious. They've killed my men, and now they've killed me. I'm holding my guts inside of me with both hands. I'm almost done. Resist! The 
this is bigger than my little life, the lives of my men, and the lives of the people I was forced to kill. Resist. Humanity demands it. Resist. If we can reprogram the SIM units and divert power to the transmitter on deck 5, my new friend will be able to regain control of the primary data loop from Xerxes. She it says that will let us use the bridge elevator and take control of the ship. Don't stop, Rebecca. Keep moving. Get to the escape pods on the command deck. We'll take off, set the toaster to wake us up in 30 years, and we'll be back on Earth before you know. A toaster built for two, baby. That's our next stop. Sound good? So let's do it. I won't take any excuses. Miri. So far, our work with the late model assassin cyborgs has gone remarkably well. I hope things with that son of a bitch Diego never come to that. But it is comforting to know we are not nearly as defenseless as the UNN stormtroopers might think. The only glitch we've encountered is with the upgraded laser rapiers. The poor things keep severing parts of themselves. We're trying to get the bugs fixed, but I know that bureaucrat is watching us. It's sad to see a man so haunted by the ghost of his father. His hatred for everything Triop represents is remarkable to behold. I have a secret from the many. I've created overrides from my little experiments in reprogramming the sim units and entrusted them to the care of three special friends. I've dressed them in red and instructed them to stay away from strangers. A smart hacker always has a back door. I'm changing. My head is full of wonderful ideas and experiments. They have so many miracles to share, so much knowledge to give. They told me how to make this implant. They said it would make a better me of me. I wish I had more time so I could give it to them. God, don't do it! Please don't! Glory to the many. <laughs> I am a voice in their choir. Oh, I believe the plans the many have for me are greater than I even imagined. The change is upon me, but the path is more glorious than we imagined. It does not stop at a mere single mutation. The form I've been promised is more beautiful than any of that. They tell me I will float through the air and strike at the foes of our biomass with my mind. With our mind. My cup runneth over. Killing the children won't be easy. But I think I'm actually onto something. The biochemistry of these worms, which I call the anolids, treats inverted proteins as toxins. With the help of the replicator in the biological survey lab, I've managed to isolate some inverted proteins in a number of vials. However, the mix with the base compound is still off, so I need to do some more research. Once I do that, and mix the toxin into the four environmental regulators, well, things can only get better. It's becoming clear that the worms are some kind of communal entity. Well, I'm not sure whether airborne toxin A will directly kill any ambulatory specimens. It should impact their communal mass and remove the residue I've observed growing on the walls and the lift shaft. But perhaps there is a more potent formula to be synthesized. I know what Miller's up to this morning. This morning, I saw Erin Bloom. She was tending to some kind of eggs. And she had been changed in the most horrible, unnatural fashion. I can only think the worst for the rest of my staff. That son of a bitch. That son of a bitch. He won't get away with this. Simulation Unit 4 just went offline again. It took the six of us 12 hours to get it back online the last time. I hacked into the data log file, and the last user online? Malik. Oh, he denied it, of course. I 
I told Bronson about it, and that paranoid crank showed up here with around 14 security men looking for blood. But she couldn't prove that Malik actually did anything. Christ, why would anybody want to sabotage the sim units? I hacked into two of the sim units yesterday, and for the love of God, I don't know why. I felt compelled by some power. My mind and my body are changing. But they know it's me. They just can't prove it. The next sim unit that goes down, Bronson and her men will They'll come for me. But I'll be ready. She may have guns and hatred on her side, but I am one of many. Something is taking over this ship. The sim units on this deck are being diverted for reasons unknown. I know it's somehow connected to the larger picture and whatever is happening since they landed on Tau Ceti. My men look at me like I'm crazy, but it is my responsibility to safeguard this ship and its crew. Screw Anatoly, screw Diego, and screw whatever poisonous influence has desecrated this vessel. I will not abandon my post or my charge. As of this time, I am declaring a state of martial law on the Von Braun. All primary subsectors of the ship will be locked down and only accessible by security access cards. If anybody is found to be interfering with the normal operations of this ship or impedes the work of the security forces, they will be shot on the spot. I brought down the last of the sim units today. I am full of the glory of the many. Here comes Bronson. I am at peace. Good evening, Bronson. Have you come to... Turn that damn thing off. Tommy, I don't know what's going on here. Ever since we received orders to clear out Deck 3, people have been disappearing. There's a kind of gloom hanging over everybody, but no one seems to be willing to talk about it. I don't like it. Meet me on the wreck deck at 0900. I've got an idea. A little insurance for you and me. Beck, I think your idea for insurance is going to get us in a lot of trouble, but I trust you, so let's do it. I've managed to wrangle access codes to the escape pods on the command deck. We only need to hack into Xerxes' emergency subsystem, get past the ice nodes, and try to avoid being spotted by Bronson's security team. Piece of cake, right? I don't feel right about any of this. But I still don't understand why you asked me to mess with the memory restoration on that grunt. Why didn't you want him to remember volunteering for this gig? He did volunteer for the implants, right? Every email from you gets stranger and stranger. It's like, it's like you're not even the same person anymore. Okay, Delacroix. Yang and I have got the transmitter almost ready to go. Once it's up and running, we'll be able to warn Earth. Frank split up the transmitter code and uploaded it to a number of art display terminals throughout this deck. Just cycle through the art and you'll find a piece of the code. I don't think the worms will spot this. I don't figure they got much of an interest in the great masters. Mon petit, there is something you should know about. I have received information from some form of artificial intelligence that is calling itself Shodan. Yes, Shodan. Wherever this intelligence actually came from, it has a terrible grudge against these analids and has saved my life more than once. Shodan has told me that there is a UNN operative aboard the ship, armed to the hilt and equipped with R-grade cyber implants. Strange bedfellows, eh? I don't know what's going on around here and I don't want to know. I'm not here for the glory of the stupid company. I'm just supposed to make sure the replicators are running. And now people are dying. We've got to turn the ship around and go home. God, get me the hell out of this place. The eggs we found near the observation chambers are different from the ones in Hydro. They release some kind of disgusting flying swarming thingies. Bullets don't do anything. Bullets, for Christ's sake. I never even fired a gun before this morning. Stay out of the mall if you can. It crawls. Taylor sent some email this morning indicating he found some kind of artifact that could infect the worms with the virus. However, if you manipulated the thing, it would introduce a toxin into the human bloodstream that could kill in minutes. Unfortunately, Taylor found this out the hard way. He died right after he sent the message. Now, if we can only locate his body, we might find that artifact. 
Mr. Shant has been online for two hours. Go tell Cortez in the crew section to come out and turn on that transmitter. If this message doesn't reach you soon, they may be able to interfere with the transmission from the bridge. I've located you, finally. This is Dr. Marie Delacroix. I have vital information for you, but I'm trapped in Cargo Bay A. Come find me as soon as you can. Constance, I fear now for my life. I think this has gone beyond any imaginings of Diego and Korenchkin. I do not believe they are in control at all. We must discover what it was they found down on the surface of Tau 75 and why they guard the secret so jealously. I think this is more important than my life, or your life, or the life of this ship. Be brave and be careful. They aren't making this easy for us, are they? I miss you. I know it's stupid, but I do. I think I'll wallow in self-pity for an hour or so and then write you again. Figures. I have to travel 67 trillion miles to meet a man. Once you're transferred to the Von Braun, everything will be better. I'll be better. I promise. Great. Someone's coming. Counting the seconds. Somebody's been tampering with the Xerxes unit. In the interest of keeping secrets from the powers that be, I've installed a backdoor to the fluidics control computer. To activate it, install hardware override 45M DEX in the system's monitoring unit in command control. You can find 45M DEX in auxiliary storage 5 in the coolant tubes. Key code 34760. artificial intelligence that wants to help me reclaim control of the Von Brandt from whomever, or whatever, is now in charge. I don't know where it came from, but I must confess, I'm happy it is here. Beware, mon petit. You cannot trust. 